And current grandfather of one of my youth new players, uh, Dick Myers presenting Scott O'Leary. Scott O'Leary, I think everybody here knew him, has heard about him, and uh, hopefully spent a lot of time with him. In the summer of 1969, Scott came down from Lamar High School and interviewed for the job of head baseball coach and assistant football coach. And three people talked to him. Dick Priggy, who was the athletic director. Dick Myers, who was the head of the physical education department. And Dick Heron, who was our trainer. And we were all left-handed. And no one could understand how Scott got the job. He wasn't left-handed, and he wasn't a dick. So, I don't know. But anyway, but he, did get, he did get the job. And he influenced students for more than 30 years. His interest in students was paramount. He was always available, gave his time for any student. Teaching and coaching was his love, and Dos Pueblos proves it well. He was always looking for ways to improve facilities, equipment, ways to get money, and to emphasize this, the football staff, one weekend for three days, went over to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and shared those three days with the football staff at the university, and ideas of football, and get some ideas of what new things there were, and so on. And one night we went to the casino, and just, you know, for some light gambling. <laughs> and after a while, Joby Nunez says, where's Scott? And Tom Everest says, he's outside, hyperventilating. <laughs> and we went out, calmed him down, and found out that he just couldn't stand all those machines, those tables, all that money flying around when it could be used for balls, basketballs, pool equipment, things like that. And he was serious. He never went back to the casino, ever. Scott weathered a roller coaster of funding, enrollment, and staffing. In 1977, we were 2,700 students. And we were strong in all kinds of in athletics and all endeavors, other extracurricular activities and academics. And we went to school from early in the morning to late at night. And through all that, down from 2,700 to 1,200, and back up now to the biggest school in Santa Barbara, he weathered, he weathered that whole time, did it very well, and made it work, and it's still working today. And, uh, let's see, I was just, um, I, I do want to say that one thing he did is he kept and maintained the athletic family and the DP family, which was so prevalent in the early days of our school. Our families were close, our kids were the same age, we vacationed together, spent many family New Year's Eves together, later 15 years in Carmel for New Year's. And our football staff in the 70s got together every year up until 2004. Scott is very dear to us. He left us too early. He would be very proud, as we all are, of the work that was done to make this 50th anniversary so special. I'm very proud to present Scott O'Leary into the Dos Provos Hall of Fame to his son, Mark O'Leary.
Louder. 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 I think my dad would have uh, liked this honor more than any of the other honors he received. He received a lot of honors. Football stadium named after him. Santa Barbara Athletic Roundtable Hall of Fame. Santa Barbara County Educator of the Year. But this one would have meant the most because um, he loved the school. And it's school-wide honors, not just athletics. I thought he was uh, not just a coach, but an educator. <laughs> but he really, he loved those photos. He loved my mom, he loved the school. <laughs> as I was driving up here, I thought, man, was there anything that he loved as much as my mom in the school? I couldn't think of anything. And then it finally hit. Oh, yeah. There was one other thing. The only thing he loved as much as my mom in school, that was beating San Marco. <laughs> he loved beating San Marco. This guy beats San Marcos a lot. But yeah, my dad thought he was an educator, so I thought I'd pass on a couple of my favorite Scott O'Leary lessons in life. There's a lot of lessons in life, but uh, two of my favorite, uh, one, he's real conservative. You know, you kind of have that let your actions speak louder than words attitude. Uh, but on the flip side, uh, when he was the head football coach, he had a strange habit of going for it on fourth down, <laughs> even, even in his own end. And I would ask him, why did you go for it? And uh, he would always say the same thing. I thought we could make it. <laughs> uh, man, it's, it's hard to argue with that. Huh? But uh, they were playing San Marcos in his last regular season game as head football coach, and they had a fourth and one, and he went for it. They scored a touchdown once again. So the Scott O'Leary life lessons for his Hall of Fame induction are game of life, let your actions speak louder than words, and if you think you can make it, don't be afraid to go for it. Thank you. Coach O uh, gave me my first coaching job in high school, so I'm forever indebted. Uh, did, didn't have a chance to really, really get to know him. He did tell me one story, though, how a, a young Donald Trump showed up in Goleta. He said, we're going to build that wall, we're going to build that wall in right field. And Scott shot that one down. No walls in right field. The baseball players know what I'm talking about. Our next uh, presenter is Mr. Scott Gutentag. Presenting Mr. Steve Meister.